Welcome to the Paraphrase Your Way to the Top webinar recording. This topic will be useful for ACAP, NCPS and HSA students. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You may want to just watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and do the activities. The webinar slides are available at this link. In this session, we want to look at the what, why and how of paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is explaining information that you've read or heard. The trick is that paraphrasing is explaining the information not in the original way you read or heard it, but in your own way. It's important, however, that the meaning of the information stays the same. Essentially, paraphrasing is about changing the words and phrasing of information. Paraphrasing can also include summarising. For example, you may read a whole book chapter and then explain the main idea of the chapter in a sentence or two. That's okay, as long as your interpretation of the main idea is the same as in the chapter. Paraphrasing is not just there to make things harder for you. It actually serves some very useful purposes. Firstly, when you have to explain something in your own words, you need to think about it and make sure you actually really understand it. That sounds like learning, doesn't it? Another benefit of paraphrasing is that it allows you to demonstrate your understanding of the topic. That's handy because you need to show your understanding of the topic to your teacher in an assignment. Thirdly, it's not acceptable to copy and paste a lot of exact wording from a source into your assignment. A source might be a book, an article, a website, things like that. You can put a few quotes in an assignment, which are the exact words from a source, but most of the time you're expected to explain information in your own way. It's the correct academic style of writing. It's important that both the information you've quoted and information that you've paraphrased is referenced. Just a note for ACAP VET diploma courses, referencing is not compulsory for you. For all other ACAP, NCPS and HSA courses, you must reference. Have a look at this question. What would your answer be at this point? One thing I'd like to point out is that paraphrasing is a spoken skill as well as a written one. Actually, it's more often used in spoken language by most people. You might not have developed skills in written paraphrasing, but I bet you know how to tell a story about something that happened, or summarise the plot of a movie. That's paraphrasing too. So you're definitely not at zero. You just need to practise the reading to writing style of paraphrasing. This is a skill that takes time to master. Give it a go and allow yourself several terms to build up the skill. OK, let's look at an example of paraphrasing. Pause the recording to read this original information. Now look at a suggested paraphrase of the information. Pause the recording again. It's important to know that this is not the only way this information could be paraphrased. The whole point of paraphrasing is to put information into your own words. So theoretically, everyone else would do this a bit differently. In reality, of course, there are not infinite ways to change the wording of a sentence, but probably a lot more variety than you might think. Here's a breakdown of the same original information and the paraphrase. You can see how I've changed the order of the information in the sentence. The blue part has moved from the beginning to the end of the first sentence, the red bit from the end to the beginning. In the second sentence, the beginning green part stays where it is but the orange and purple phrases swap places. So that's the order changing. In terms of the words used, you can see that for most people, it is not easy to make, has changed to, it is difficult for many people. Pause the recording to have a good look at how the other phrases have been changed. So what techniques can you use to achieve a paraphrase? An overall approach is about understanding the information and then putting it away and explaining it yourself. So first you would read the text and make notes of the key points, but don't write down whole sentences. Then put the text away and explain the information in your own words using your notes as a guide. Then compare your paraphrase with the original text. You should have covered the main ideas accurately, but not explained them in the same words. The idea behind the overall approach is that when you don't have the original text in front of you, you can't copy it closely. 
Now, here's an idea if you're not used to paraphrasing in writing. Because you already know how to paraphrase in speaking, use that skill as an intermediate step to get you to the writing stage. So, try recording yourself explaining something. You can use your phone. Or ask a friend to write down what you say. Then listen back and write down what you said. You can edit and improve if necessary. OK, so let's look at techniques for paraphrasing individual sentences or groups of sentences. Here we're going to keep the original text open and do a combination of changing the order of information, replacing words and leaving out words. Just a reminder that a synonym is a word that means the same as the word you've got. So useful and helpful might be synonyms in certain contexts. Antonyms are words that mean the opposite. An example might be that long is the opposite of short. OK, let's see how these techniques work. As in the first example we saw in this video, here we've moved dispositional optimism is to the end of the sentence. Because we're changing the grammar of the sentence, we actually need to say is called dispositional optimism in the paraphrase. This technique of changing the location of information in the sentence is easy to forget, but it's really important to make the paraphrase different from the original. This example shows information moving from the beginning to the end of a sentence, but information can also move to other places in the sentence, in some cases such as the middle. It depends on the grammar and length of each sentence. Now moving on to replacing words with different words, specifically synonyms. In this example, the original words, the expectation, are changed to anticipating. Also, more good things is changed to a greater number of positive things. Bad is changed to negative. Happen is changed to occur. Is called is changed to is known as. It's lucky there are lots of synonyms in English. Otherwise, all this replacing wouldn't be possible. Another way to replace words is with phrases. This means replacing a word with a group of words. This example shows that psychological deficit can be changed to a deficient way of thinking. The last version here shows that for a successful paraphrase, we need to remember to rearrange the order of the information in the sentence. A third way of replacing a word is with an antonym, and making the antonym negative to give the same meaning as the original word. Here you can see short is the original word. Not long has been used to replace it in the paraphrase. Moving on now to taking out words that are not vital to the meaning of the information. In this example, the word global is not really necessary to understand the meaning of the sentence, so we can take it out and that helps to make the paraphrase different from the original. Of course, this technique is a little bit dangerous, as you need to be sure that the words you take out really are not necessary, so use this one with caution. Now some good news. You don't have to think of synonyms and antonyms all by yourself technology can help. There's an inbuilt thesaurus in Microsoft Word and plenty of paper and online thesauruses available. A thesaurus is a book that lists words and their synonyms and antonyms. Let's use the Microsoft Word thesaurus to do this paraphrase. All I need to do is right click on a word with my mouse and I get some options, one of which is synonyms. If I like a word, all I need to do is click on it in the list and it automatically is replaced in my document. A note of caution about synonyms, however, not all words in a list of synonyms from a thesaurus will fit the context of your information. So consider the options carefully and only replace the original word with a synonym that does reflect the same meaning. You can also search for synonyms and antonyms in an online thesaurus. Here is thesaurus.com. I put a word in here and I get options here. OK, it's over to you. Have a go at paraphrasing this sentence using some of the techniques we've looked at. Pause the recording to give yourself time. How did you go? Here is one possible way to paraphrase this information. Remember there's no one right way to do this. Your paraphrase will be different, and that's OK. Here's another practice activity for you. Pause the recording and try to paraphrase these sentences. 
how did you go with this one? I've put a possible paraphrase here. What do you think? One last practice if you're up for it. Pause again to have a go at this one. What do you think of my paraphrase? I had to use a thesaurus several times to do this one. Here are some resources that may be helpful as you work on your paraphrasing skills. Get in touch with us at Learning Support if you have any queries or need specific advice about an assignment you're writing. Good luck with your studies.